All right, trying to get back on the project here. It's been a couple days. It's uh, me time almost again, 11 o'clock at night. Time to work on my junk. So, I found uh, a brand new uh, basket here from probably the 70s. A little rust on the bearing surface. Uh, came out of this old box here. Got graveyard specialties on it. Can't make out what the COD tag me says, but maybe you can tell in the video what it says. They have dates on those things at some point. Um, anyway, this is old. Really old. So, this one is an 8mm. So, this would do the trick. One advantage of a open system, or I mean, an adjustable transmission belt drive system is the belt link doesn't really matter. You can move it back and forth quite a bit. So, it doesn't really matter what you use. So, I got that. I got these other ones here. Stays on. I've been collecting stuff for a while here. So. This looks like an 11 millimeter system here. Vintage pulley. That means it's junk. And this one here is brand new. So I don't know if this bike deserves new parts. Seven ninety four. Use a ninety six tooth belt. PB. That's easy, like Primo kind of stuff. Who knows? Uh, paid for it. Yeah, more corrosion. What they do. So this is the other one. If I was gonna do a racing. I'd put the eleven on it, but for street use, I just use eights. They're usually slightly more reliable in long-term applications than they are on the other. Yeah, I don't want to go on. There it goes. There you go. There's an 11 millimeter. And this one down here. It's got a ring gear on it. And another 11 millimeter. That can be either open or closed. Same system. <laughs> down to two baskets. All right, that's a little bit too good for this bike. Let's, let's I take the motor part and pump it up quite a bit. It would be worth doing, but for just a piece of crap, probably not worth it. So, there's an 11 millimeter built. So this is more uh, my speed here. Used. More vintage clutches that don't work worth a squat. We got better ones. There you go, 11 millimeter, perfect. Vintage 11 millimeter. It's a nice eight, but I don't have a front pulley for it, so that means I don't use it. This one has a space here, on it. so it doesn't allow for that. Two hands. BDO 1185. Standard built for a million different applications. Oops. So I need to swap out the transmission plate yet to make this adjustable, but for now it is what it is. Let's see how close this belt is going to be. It helps if it's kind of semi close. I can't see exactly what we're looking at. There we go. made for aluminum primary. If we had aluminum primary in the bike, that's what the tranny set up for. There, perfect. There's our belt drive. Got a little clearance in it. Move the tranny back slightly and we'll be good to go. All right, there you go. Just got a fish rod for this place.
little bit. Now we got a good clutch for this, not this crappy clutch here. So let's go find us a good clutch. And we're going to need a motor sprocket nut too because we don't have one for here yet. We'll have to come up with one of those. Okay, here's our Ulto clutch. Way better than what we have. Stupid ass vibrating stone plates, which I don't really like. These plates are definitely better than those plates. <clears throat> so these are the vibrating, anti-vibrating style plate. Stock looking junk. These are the ones I like. No vibrating style. actually worth a lot of money. It costs a lot anyway. Okay, the most chewed up plate goes against the aluminum because it's going to get chewed up. This coming out of a steel setup. None of these are chewed up. Not yet. They will be though. Alright. <clears throat> Do a plate. Look for the word out. I don't see the word out anywhere. Yeah, that is a really a cheap plate. Oh, there it is. Extra fine print. Out. I like to mix up the stagger a little bit. That yeah, doesn't matter, it's not staying together this way. This is all going to be coming back apart again anyway. Since I put it together for now, I can get the mouse trap up on here in a clutch and get it all sorted out. And where's the out? There it is. Fine print again. Ooh, I can read that one. Plates should not bind up on anything when they go in and out. Just like that. Okay, so I got some crappy ass steel fiber plates and some expensive ass steel plates we're not going to use. Need some springs though. <clears throat> Here's our plate. We are going to need a custom tool to put that in with, which we do not have right in front of us right now. So these are the stock springs, and these look like stock springs too. spring tester. I think those are stiffer than these. I think these are stiffer. But if we use a mouse trap, we gotta use different springs than those. We're supposed to use stiff ass springs, not these weak ass little flimsy ones. Now if I use a mouse trap eliminator bracket, which that little short bracket goes under there, then I would use wimpy springs like these things. So to work a mouse trap, you're supposed to have heavy springs in there to make it return. Because this has a real heavy spring in here, and that's how it works. It gives you lots of tension. This one has a scorpion clutch in it, so it doesn't count. But. So, I don't know what I got in the way of uh, springs right now. I don't think I have any good used early springs right this minute. 
There's my fancy washer at right there. Okay, let's go over here and look at. Uh, we'll go over here and see if we can find laying around. And my foothold is a little. My stool down here is not very stable. See, my footstool is a K-model engine. See? Makes it for a good footstool. Now, this is Fred's bike. I'm sure he's got some parts he's not using. Let's see. Yeah, wimpy-ass springs. Got a mouse trap illuminator in here. What else we got in here we don't think he doesn't need? Ooh. Think he's got footboard stoves in it. Motor mount. All well, kinds of stuff that he doesn't need in here. parts all right for now we're going to go ahead and use the uh, wimpy f stock springs because i don't see any good ones laying around i don't feel like putting brand new ones in there just yet but probably won't wind up doing that okay that's our tool that we need to compress the springs so we're going to use these crappy uh, springs right here i need a zip gun Zip gun. I'm going to need a socket too, which I don't see. I've got too much clutch to jump on around here. We're going to put away our parts over here. See, after you're done doing your mock ups, I should take them. Probably should maybe do something about the rust. Take some brand new high high performance grease and stick it in there like that. Something to do with the about it. There we go. That'll help dampen out the rust a little bit. And put it back in a plastic baggie. Another 10 years. Probably how long I've had that. Okay, I need a socket. Okay, 916 socket. Someone discovered that I use SK sockets. Jeez. Yes, they are old. These are about 40 years old. I've been using them for 40-something years. They still work good. Buy good tools, they last. That's what I keep saying. Some people don't believe me. Close, you can't see anything you're that close. Okay, you take all your springs. Normally, you put them over the clutch basket over here, put it all together, but that's when it's on the table. When it's not on the table, you just have to stack it up like this and be careful with it.
in holes, 10 springs. Okay, now take your plate here, which has dimples right here to hold all the springs in the right spot. Move them around a little bit. Take our fancy washer, lay it up on top. Spring issues here. They're not where they belong. That's why it's easier to have the studs over here. Kind of self aligns everything. Okay, much better that time. Put that down there. Take our nut, press it down a little bit to get a couple threads. Okay. Then you hit it with a zip gun. And you pick it up. Holds all the springs in the right spot. Kind of. They're not 100% right. See that spring is in not where it belongs. You take a Phillips screwdriver and move it over. To make it right, don't put your finger over the hole, it might poke you when you go through. That would hurt if you went all the way through like that. So just put them back where they belong here. Get all the holes lined up, and it should go right on. It's an offset three pattern, so the white part is here. See, these are closer together than up here. So the clutch basket looks the same way. So you go over here and you put the basket the same direction. It should go right on. There you go. <clears throat> and you take the nuts with a big slot cut across it. That's what holds them on. These are already pre-lubed because they're in the oil down here. Looped. Decision adjustment. Just down to about an inch. Which I got no way of measuring it right now, so I'm just kind of eyeball it. About an inch from here, this inside edge to that edge there. About an inch is what you're looking for for maximum distance. The maximum limit is 132nd under an inch, but it should be close. You can see how the plate doesn't look very square, so that means you need to tighten this nut down some more over here. And maybe back this one off one notch to square things up a little bit, see? The bottom one looks pretty even. Very close for mock-up. Doesn't really matter. It's like we're going to ride the bike or anything. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the clutch. See that lever there? When it hits it, like that, we're doing something. This adjustment screw is all screwed up. It's bad. My guess is the throw-out bearing is not engaged over there. So I 
have to go in there and play with it a little bit so you can get to engage. And go over there. See it's a big screwdriver slot. So we'll take a big screwdriver. And we got a pair of channel locks over here too, which might be a little better actually used to get it apart. Remember these threads are bad because we had the bead on to get it off. Jeez, that is tight. Oh. Get some force on that one. Okay, so now I'm going to look in there to see what the problem is. Ooh, it's got oil in there. Looks like it's full of water. See, that throw-out bearing right there is not exactly where it belongs. tell exactly what the problem is, but something is not correct. And we're definitely hitting the oil tank. <clears throat> it looks like it's kind of engaged where it belongs, but it isn't working correctly. All right. We definitely got a lot of nasty oil inside the tranny, so... Oh boy. Back on the other side and see what the problem is over here. Maybe make this work better over here, who knows? This screw's not very good, I know that. clutch work without it working correctly. This screw is way the hell out so the throw out bearing is not all the way in there like it should be. Or the push rod's not in there or something's not right, I'm not sure. Well I know it's not working. So we'll give it one more try to see if we can make it work. If that doesn't work, then we're stuck with what we got. So we're gonna disassemble it. comes out and then drops back in, that's not right. So this is going to have to all come apart to make it work correctly. So this will never work correctly because it's not in the right. That goes like that. Just going to put this lightly back together. Enough to kind of hold things together. When I put the primary cover up on here, we can make sure all the parts fit together like they're supposed to. Should be a plus. Alright, so the 
screw sticking away further than it should. Oh, that started to work there for a minute. And it slipped off. It worked once. And, um, okay, the old tank, we need to work on the spacers and get the rear of the tank up higher. So let's play with that. A lot of the things we got to play with. Shifter's here correct, but this is the wrong shifter, but we can't mock that up. This is the correct lever, or rod, I mean. It goes down here like that. That's what's supposed to be down there. So that's not correct. We got the wrong transmission top. We can fix that though. That's supposed to sit about right there. So over here, some kind of a homemade piece of crap. I'm not sure what that is. But I think they had that stuck on there trying to make that work. You can probably almost make that work as an FX shifter. Definitely not correct though. But you could probably hook it up and make it work. It'd be a reverse shift pattern though. But you could make that work in a transmission. So that means the upshift you push down, not lift up. Which is what I like for racing, but for street it's not the... You know, some people don't know how to ride. They get confused. So. Anyway, that could be put on there and made to work if we wanted to. This lever here has to come off to lock this up correctly. So blow the snap ring off here, which we don't really have access to get off correctly. But that doesn't mean we can't get it off, though. see in here. It's always dark. Ah. Snap ring's actually pretty good. Usually you can just pop them right off. This one is actually on there good. In this case, it's bad because I want to get it off. Without destroying it. There we go. There's the snap rings there. It's only slightly bent, we can reuse that. Shift it now. There you go. Custom. There's no reason for this to be bent like that, but that's just how it is for now. So I could make it work like this very easily. Like I said, just be a reverse shift pattern. It would go boom, 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 no problem. But we have to go into transmission anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just put the good parts in there. Either way, we can make it all work correctly. All right, uh, let's see. Got this on there. Use that. A lot of extra parts I'm not using right now. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on the oil tank a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and put the correct spacers in there and then come back and see if we can make it work. I've looked around for the bracket that goes under there and I haven't found one yet. But I know I got at least two somewhere floating around, so I'm gonna look a couple more times for that too. We'll be back.